So if you're looking up a video on how to install ARP head studs in your truck, it means you're just like me. You're playing the horsepower game, you're putting some, uh, you know, a tuner, bigger turbo, all that stuff on your truck, and you don't want to sacrifice reliability. This is my tow rig, that's all it's for. I'm not trying to break any records and do tractor pulls or any kind of craziness. I really just want to have uh, really low EGTs while I'm towing heavy, and I want to be able to have really good reliability while I'm going cross country. This is supposed to help that. Um, what this does is it allows you to put more clamping force down between your head and your block so when you put all that extra boost into the cylinder, it doesn't float the head. And if you're not familiar with engines, yes, that does happen. People float the heads and they destroy their head gaskets when you put too much boost in there. So that kind of reliability does come out of price. These are made out of unobtainium or animantium or some kind of crazy nonfiction material because they're, it's like 450 bucks for 28 studs. I have no idea why they cost that much. I'm just ignorant. Maybe it's made out of diamonds. I have no idea how it could possibly cost that much. But when you look up anybody who builds a performance engine, especially a boosted performance engine, everybody uses a high grade head stud and there's, there's no cheap ones out there. They're all very expensive. So I didn't mess around. This is like $450 for this kit. Hopefully it does what we want and allows us to turn our boost up a little bit and make it to where we can have higher clamping force and buy a little bit of that reliability I'm talking about. So we're gonna install this the backyard mechanic method. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the bolts one at a time out of this thing and replace them one at a time with our head studs. Now we need to remove these plugs for the valve cover gasket, unplug them, and then undo each of these from our injectors. Now I'm not sure what to call this next part. Some people call it the like rocker, knocker assembly. Some people call it the lower valve cover, but there's actually this chunk of aluminum right here comes off. And so to remove it, there's a series of these bolts that go right down the middle that we need to pull out. Now each one of these rocker arms need to come off. There's a bolt in the middle that you take off and the whole thing slips up. You need to keep track of these um, and make sure you put them back exactly where you got them from. Stuff like this, I'll just make super, I don't even put one, two, three, four, five, six or anything like that. Put front and then the order I take it all, all off, bolt everything just goes in order the way I took it off. That way when I go to put it back, it's really easy to keep track of. I like to pre-assemble stuff like this on the table instead of just going one at a time um, on the truck and that's for a couple of reasons. If I remove the bolts, oops, let's turn on our camera light. If I remove the bolt and then I have to lube up everything, drop it in and then assemble my washer and then assemble my nut and all that stuff. First off, you're thumbling with small parts that are you know, on top of your engine, which I never like doing. You don't wanna lose a washer or something like that. And if you pre-assemble everything on the table before you start pulling these head bolts, if you're short one nut, you're not screwed. You don't have to like have this thing be down until ARP sends you a new one. So in my experience, pre-assembling them like this will save you a little bit of uh, time in your installation. This is a torque sequence that comes with the ARP head studs. Uh, I plan on sticking to the sequence. Um, the only difference is it says max 125 foot-pounds. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people torque these down to a lot more than that. I'm gonna go to 135. That's a pretty common thing for people to do. All right, I located the first bolt that we need to remove in our sequence. And so I'm gonna break it loose with this breaker bar. Ooh, that's 284,000 miles of being in the same place. Now we're gonna take it over to our table. 
put it next to those ones. And throw our pre, our new pre-lubricated bolt in its place. Now you don't, you want to bottom it out, but you don't want it to be really tight. So we're going to very gently put it in the bottom there. And then we're going to back it out just a hair. Now I'm going to use my ratchet to make it hand tight. There we go. Super, super soft. We're not trying to get it to bottom out real hard or anything. I have my torque wrench set up already to 105 foot pounds. So we're going to start by torquing all these down to 105. And then we're going to go in increments of 10 all the way up to 135 is what I decided I'm going to do. Pretty straightforward, right? Now we just need to do that 25 more times using that sequence. going really well. One thing I can say is you want to make sure you uh, be really mindful about where your injectors are because this is plastic, that's brass. If you bump this it would be really easy to mess it up. And I've got, you can see I've got just enough socket and adapter to go right over the top of them. So no matter how I wiggle, I'm pretty far away. So now everything has been torqued uh, to 115, 125, 135, and then I did one final torque of 135 again. So the reason I do it twice at the end is to make sure I didn't miss any or that while I'm you know, torquing this one, it doesn't make that one loosen up or whatever. Just good peace of mind. So now I am taking and putting all the rockers back on uh, in the exact order and in the exact orientation that I took them off, and uh, I'm going to set valve lash. Torque all the rocker arms down to 27 foot-pounds. There we go. Be careful of the injectors when you're doing this. They're very fragile, and especially if they're high miles. That plastic uh, starts to get pretty frail. This particular, this guy's got a little swivel on it, so it makes it a little easier to do this kind of thing. Now that everything's been torqued down to 27 foot-pounds, we're going to check the lash on all of our valves. And so you adjust it on this side, and then you uh, stick your feeler gauge over in this side. I'm going to walk you through how to do that real quick. All right, I am getting this fan clutch tool to rotate the engine. I wish that I would have planned ahead. I would have went and just bought the barring tool. It's a lot easier, but this is getting the job done. We just got to turn real slow so the pressure can escape. So the pressure can escape the cylinder as we're turning it. There's a mark, which I haven't located yet. I'll try and turn this enough to where I can get underneath it and try to mark this mark with the paint pen. Aha! If you look close, you can see a line right here and it's uh, etched. It says TDC, top dead center. So you can barely spot that thing coming by when you're up top, which is why I'll use a paint pen for a lot of stuff like this. All right, we marked a line with a paint pen. Now we're going to spin the engine around until we see that white mark come up to the 12 o'clock position. This doesn't have to be extremely precise, believe it or not. So if it's 
a degree off, it really won't make that big of a difference. You just want to get it as close to the 12 o'clock position as you can. Ooh, white marks almost all the way up. Perfect. It's time to adjust these valves. So I wrote down in this cardboard box, <laughs> I didn't want to go inside and print something out, so I just kind of wrote some of this stuff down. I wrote what our intake valve um, minimum and maximum clearances are going to be, and our exhaust valve minimum and maximum clearances are going to be. If they don't fall within these clearances, then we're going to need to adjust it to this clearance. Um, then we use we take the lock nut and we're going to torque it down to 18 foot pounds. So the way it's the way the engine is oriented right now, we can adjust intake valves on one, two, and four, and exhaust valves on one, three, and five. One, two, and four are the cylinders. So cylinder number one, cylinder number two, cylinder number four. So that that being the case, we know that the intake side of cylinder number one. See how you can hear that? That means there's no tension on it. That's what we want. And then exhaust on number one, intake on number two, but the exhaust on number two should have tension. So you can't hear it. So that's how you can check to make sure that you're in top dead center on the first orientation. So then we're gonna spin this back over and our second set of valves that we're gonna tighten is gonna be in this order. Now we'll be able to tighten the intake valve on three, five, and six, and the exhaust valve on two, four, and six. So what I'm gonna do first, because we had these rockers off earlier, I know we already torqued these, but we are going to torque them again. Now that the engine has rotated a couple times, I wanna make sure that I didn't torque this while there was tension on it, and somehow that affect the overall result. I've got two sets of feeler gauges here. I've got one with the feeler gauges out for the exhaust side, and I have this set of feeler gauges for the intake side. So our maximum tolerance is gonna to be 0 0.015. So we're gonna see if we can fit a 0 0.015 in there. Too tight. And then our minimum tolerance is going to be a 0 0.006. Can we fit a 0 0.006 in there? Doesn't look like it. So now we're gonna loosen it up. We're gonna put our 0.010 in there. And then we're gonna put the Allen wrench, loosen it up to where we can fit it in. There we go. So now our 0.010 is in there. It's gonna be hard to see from your angle. Let's see here. See now that's too tight. Loosen it up just a little bit. Can we still move it? We can still move it. You want just like a hair of drag. Just like the smallest amount of drag you can imagine. You definitely don't want it to be clamped down in there too tight and you don't want it to be so loose that it's just kind of flopping around. So now I'm gonna torque this down. Let's torque down to 18 foot pounds. See how we're still good? We know that one's all good to go. So what I'm gonna do is take my paint pen and I'm gonna paint this bad boy so I know that it's done. So now we can do, according to our chart, we can do the exhaust. Yep. So we can do the exhaust side now and see if that's within our allowable tolerance. So let's see if we can fit the O, our point O three O into here. Oh yes, we can. Very easily. Uh, I think that might be a little too loose. So I'm actually going to readjust this one as well. And I'm gonna take and I'm gonna adjust this down to point, point oh 0.020. Oh. So we're gonna break this loose. Gonna loosen this up, fit it in there. Slowly tighten it until it gets too tight. Too tight, now we're gonna slowly loosen it up. See now it's free. And now that's just about right. We want it just to have a little bit of drag on our 0.020. Right there, seems perfect. Now we're gonna hold the Allen steady, tighten it down. Let's double check. We're still in the clear. Now we're gonna torque this bad boy down. 18 foot pounds. 
are set and 100 percent so now we're gonna do the same thing all the way down the line cylinder number three we can tighten the exhaust side next one will be cylinder number four intake so you get the general idea here now i'm going to adjust the exhaust on cylinder number five and then uh, mark it with the little white marker to make sure that I know which ones I tightened. And I'm going to spin the engine uh, 360 degrees. And after I've spun the engine over, I'll be going back to this second set here. So it'll be three, five, and six on the intake side, two, four, and six on the exhaust side. And by the time I hit number six on the exhaust side, every single one of these should have a white ring around it. If I'm missing a white ring, that means I forgot to color it with the marker or I forgot to check it. Either way, I'll know that it's time to recheck it because there's not a little white ring around it. Once all these have a little white ring around them, I know that I'm good to go. Let's trim our lower valve cover. This is the front of the engine. This is the back of the engine. Might be hard to tell, but I marked in Sharpie. Basically this whole little chunk needs to get out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is uh, use one of these rotary files on the end of my die grinder. That's what you're looking for right there. Got to clearance it out enough to where you can fit that head bolt through there. I went ahead and put this gasket on the bottom, cleaned everything up really good with brake clean. Uh, got the surface on the engine head cleaned with brake clean. So I'm ready to put this back on. Now we need to retorque our lower valve cover to 18 foot pounds. Work your way from the center out. This isn't required, but I've decided to go with a brand new valve cover gasket. Um, the other one had 284,000 miles on it. Wasn't having any issues, but since there is electrical components that go through it. I don't want to uh, take the chance of having some weird um, drivability issue that I can't troubleshoot. So I'm gonna install this brand new gasket in the hopes to get ahead of that problem. I reassembled everything, just torqued down the valve cover. Let's see if it starts. <laughs> now that we know that it works, I'm gonna go drive it around and incrementally turn up the boost. Well, I've been driving it around for about a week. Everything's been running and driving perfect. No signs of a head gasket failure, so mission success. I'm gonna go ahead and change out the oil. This might not be necessary, but it gives me a good peace of mind. When you're using things like uh, this type of anti-seize that they give you for the head bolts, it's probably made to go in your engine and have no harm, but I still feel better with the idea of flushing it out and just starting with a fresh oil change. So I'm going to do that now. I have a bunch more Cummins specific content on the way. I'd like to do a camshaft, compound turbo setup, a whole bunch of stuff like that. So if you like videos like this and you want to see more, make sure you like the video, subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm bleeping, at bleepingjeepnate. And uh, we'll see you next time.